we last left Greenfoot, this was the state of our ACT method inside the CRAB class. As we start part two, we're going to add some random behavior to the CRAB to make it a little bit more lifelike. What I'm going to do over here after the IF statement is I'm going to add a new statement. We still have to turn the CRAB if it reaches an edge, and we've decided we're going to move it 10 pixels regardless. But let's have a look at the new IF statement we've inserted in the middle. It's as if the random number that we generate is less than 10, we're going to have the crab turn 5 degrees. Now this particular method call deserves our attention for several reasons. First of all, you notice that instead of having the name of an individual crab over here on the left, we've got the entire Greenfoot class mentioned here. We know it's a class because it begins with a capital letter. What does this mean? Well, this is an example of a static function. What it means is that instead of this method belonging to an individual crab or an individual actor, this belongs to an entire class. Static methods like this one are usually utility functions. Here, the Greenfoot class owns this method and provides the utility to us of generating a random number. This one, with the parameter being set to 100, generates an integer in the range of 0 to 99. Now let's calculate the probability that this particular method is going to return a number less than 10. If we set up a fraction, we see that in the denominator, the range of results is going to be 0 to 99. And the cases that we care about are the cases for which this thing returns an answer in the range 0 to 9, because those are the numbers that will make this statement true. We can see that this is going to happen exactly 10% of the time. Therefore, with this if statement, 10% of the time, we're going to run this method called turn5. That means that while the crab is moving, 10% of the time it will also do a 5 degree turn, even if it's not caught at the edge. Let's run this now and see how it works in practice. Can you see that as the crab moves, it has a tendency to turn every once in a while? Let's try it one more time. We can exaggerate this effect by increasing the turn angle here. Notice that every once in a while, about 10% of the time in that it moves, it randomly turns 35 degrees. Question, what would happen if we change this 10 to a 50? Would the crab turn more often or less often? Let's see. We see that 50% of the time now, the crab does a 35 degree turn. In the next part of our simulation, we would like to add some worms to this world and have the crab eat the worms as it comes across them. To do that, we need to create a new class that also inherits from actor. We're going to come over here to edit, and we're going to say new class. And we're going to call this class the worm class. As is always the case, we're going to start with a capital letter when defining a new class name. You can see that initially the worm is listed down here. Of course we want the worm to inherit a lot of the capabilities of the actor, so to do that we're going to use the extends command. We're not going to need these variables and methods for now, so we're going to delete them. We need to add an import statement so that Greenfoot's compiler can find the actor class. And now you can see that after I've hit the compile button, the worm class has jumped all the way up here, indicating with this arrow that both it and the crab now both inherit from actor. One other thing we want to do is we want to attach a picture of the worm to the worm class. So to do that, I'm going to right mouse click and hit the set image button. And I'm going to attach this preloaded picture of the worm to our class. Now, if we create some new worms and add them to our screen, we get the desired effect. 
Let's now add some crabs and see if they're capable of eating the worms. Inside the crab class, I have lowered the amount of random turning that the crab does to 5 degrees, and now we're going to run the simulation once again. Are the crabs eating the worms? Hopefully you figured out that the reason that the crabs are not eating the worms is that we have not added any code to do so. Let's do that next. To get the crabs to eat the worms, we need to add some additional code to our crab class. So in addition to moving like it always does, we've added a small amount of code now where the crab will be looking for the worm and if it sees it, it's going to eat it. Before we can compile, we've got to deal with these two compiler errors. The compiler is saying that it can't see the methods eat or can see. Let's see if we can figure out what's going wrong. We should have inherited these methods from actor. Let's look at the actor class to see if they're there. Here are the methods for the actor class. And we can see that since this is an alphabetical order, that there is no method here called can see. It turns out that these methods aren't in the actor class. They're in a different class called animal. And what we need to do is to move our inheritance hierarchy to have crab and worm instead of inheriting from actor to inherit from animal. Let's do that now. And now we need to make a final change in our inheritance hierarchy to have both crab and worm inherit from animal instead of from actor. With this simple change now, you can see that the compiler errors are gone as the animal class now provides the added functionality that we need to make the crab be able to hunt down the worms and eat them. Let's try it all out now and see if it works. It looks like the worms are slowly going away as the crabs come into contact with them, which is exactly the desired effect. Let me speed this up now a little bit. And we see that the worms are now all gone.